everyone, welcome back. My name's Diana. This is my channel, Bookish Die. And once again, I am doing a belated monthly wrap up, this time for the month of May. So I, this is gonna be on the shorter side because I only read four books in May. I actually started off fairly strong. I was getting through books pretty quickly. I had started a couple of books. And then the Mass Effect Legendary Edition Trilogy Remaster dropped in the middle of May and I spent two, two and a little over two weeks just injecting that into my veins and I did not read anything else in the month of May. So it was good in the sense that I love Mass Effect a lot, but also I'm now very close to getting behind on my reading goals. So I'm hoping for a better June, but we'll see how it goes. So the first book that I read in May was A Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee. This is a contemporary romance focused on two characters, Audrey and Landon. Audrey is the owner of a bakery in a small California town called uh, The Comfort Zone. And due to a mix up on the part of her assistant, uh, cu culinary critic Landon uh, gets a cake that was supposed to be for a six-year-old's birthday and he writes this absolutely scathing review and that comes out after they've hooked up for the night or had a one night stand and I might have to Leia no one moment anyway um and so as a way to apologize because he realizes that there's this mix-up but he doesn't want to retract the review because one he's like this goes against my standards and two he's like I don't want anyone to realize that we slept together uh, and to think that I'm retracting this review because of that he ends up offering her a position as a guest baker on one of his friends uh, new tv shows and that includes staying at this secluded villa with him <sighs> This book, like, not to like be too cute on, this book was a mess. This was a book that I had been looking forward to when it came out last year because I had seen that Daniel Day Kim was attached, you know, executive to produce and star in an adaptation of this. It was a uh, contemporary romance with two Korean Americans. It was a baking romance. It sounded like something that I would really enjoy. And unfortunately, the more I read, read it, the more I was like, why are you reading this? You don't like it. And it got, it got to the point where I was just, I sunk cost fallacy to it. I'm like, I've already spent this time reading it. I might as well just finish it and see what happens. So my main issues with this, so I have a few issues with this book. The first is that it felt to me that aside from some family stuff that we got with both Lena and Audrey's family, that both characters seemed unmoored in terms of we hear about their friendships. And at the beginning, I was excited because we see Audrey's friend, Tara, who's a brewer and owns his brewery. And I thought, okay, you know, we're gonna be getting some great lady friendship in addition to this romance. And we didn't really get that. Both characters just felt so disconnected from their communities. And with Landon, that might've been intentional because he's this critic, he's going around the world, tasting different foods uh, and writing about it. But with Audrey, we hear that, oh, you know, the locals love her, that she's, quickly become this institution in this town. And even when the tourists leave her, the locals still go. And we don't really see that. And it was really frustrating because that's something that I do like in my romances is to get a sense of who, what are the communities that the protagonists surround themselves with? Because I like romances that acknowledge that it's not just romantic love that's important, but also, you know, friendships and familial love. And I didn't really get that. The other, one of the other main problems I had with this book is that it, I was promised a sexy romance. The writing, the characters were very horny for each other, but it was fade to black uh, sex scenes. And I don't want to come across as saying like all romance needs sex scenes. That's not the case. I think you can have romances where you do have these fade to black moments, but the way that the writing was 
structured and the description, I felt misled with that. And then the main thing, and this is spoiler warnings for the book, is that there's an accidental pregnancy in this book and there's nothing in this book in the cover on the cover or on in the back copy that gives you the sense that there is going to be an accidental pregnancy and I think that's a huge misstep on the part of the publisher to not let people know because I do think pregnancy is one of those content warnings particularly in romance when it's an accidental pregnancy it was something that I had picked up early on like there were hints early on where Audrey's like oh you know I'm so tired the taste of wine is making me nauseous which is a problem because I'm supposed to be creating these desserts that are centered around these wines and I'm like oh they're doing an accidental pregnancy there's anyway it was just really frustrating because again I don't have a problem with accidental pregnancy romances but I do think there's some they are things that do need to be telegraphed at various points when advertising about the book and I was just very frustrated with it I did while I did have some pro a lot of problems with this book, there were some things that I liked. I liked the little bits of Audrey and Tara's relationship that we saw. I liked the familial dynamics. Again, what we saw between Landon and his family, mainly his mom and his younger brother, and then uh, Audrey and her mother. And I also liked the casual Korean, the Korean American-ness of the book. There wasn't really any it was very much them just kind of incorporating it into their day-to-day -day lives which again I liked but it that the bad and the things that I really disliked about this book outweighed the good for me so I ended up giving it about two stars um and I don't think it's actually one I would recommend and I honestly don't think that this is an author I'm going to try again I know she has a book coming out this year or later this year that centers on Tara and Landon's brother Seth but I I just had such a bad experience with this book. I don't think I'm going to try reading it. The second book that I read in May was Fireheart Tiger by Elliot Bibledard. This is a novella published by Tor.com, released earlier this year. It is a fantasy novella. It centers on um, Than, who is a princess in the kingdom of Binhai. And she has returned from a fear... I think it is Ephiria um, from from a kingdom that reads very much as um, colonial France and she had been sent there as a child as um, kind of a hostage kind of like a yeah it was as a hostage and so she's returned after uh, several years away and she's adjusting and the princess of this country Eldris comes to negotiate a trade agreement and, and is like no I actually didn't come to negotiate the agreement I came to have your hand in marriage and it's around this time that this fire spirit Giang uh comes and reveals herself as the person who had initially caused the fire um back well my cats are <laughs> obsessed with my tripods today hi buddy Loki. Anyway, so Eldris comes to propose marriage and uh, Tan originally accepts, but it doesn't, ha anyway, things happen. I really enjoyed this. This was, I, I really like Elliot de Bodar's writing. It's very lush. I really liked the exploration of colonialism uh, and how it impacts those who are colonized and those who are taken to the colonizing country and it's kind of like um exploring how they feel about it but also reaffirming the fact that no this was a bad thing that happened that it's not love it's possessiveness um the one complaint that I had about this is I wished it could have been a little bit longer maybe like 10 pages I felt like there was so much in there there was so much rich world building and i don't i feel like there wasn't quite enough room for it um but i really enjoyed this i think if there's ever anything else published in the same world i would happily pick it up i gave this about 3.75 uh to four stars out of five
The third book I read was an audiobook. It was Missing from the Village, the story of the serial killer Bruce MacArthur, The Search for Justice, and The System That Failed Toronto's Queer Community by Justin Ling. So I have been familiar with Justin Ling's work. Uh, he had hosted the third season of CBC's Uncover podcast. It's an investigative podcast series that has different topics and different hosts each season. And so his season, The Village, was focused on cold cases and the search for justice for missing men in Toronto's queer community dating back to like the 1960s or 70s uh, that had been reopened due to the arrest of Bruce MacArthur, who was a serial killer preying on marginalized men in Toronto's queer community. And so this book, it, so whereas the podcast wasn't really focused on MacArthur or the missing men, this book is. And this book was very, very well written. It was very hard to listen to at times, but I think that it did a very good job. So Justin Ling is a journalist based in Canada, and so he had covered the missing men in Toronto for, I believe it was Vice News, and it had been happening for years, and there were several instances where people had gone to the police because uh, there were men who had community who were trying to find out what happened to their friend to seek justice and they were brushed off and finally it got to the point where they did discover who had killed these men. And I'm not normally a true crime fan, but what I think Ling did really well with this book is fo one, focus on the victim. So focus on uh, the men who were killed, looking at where they came from, looking at their families, the people they left behind. Um, and exploring that space that was left behind. Um, and the second thing I thought that he did that I really liked was he wasn't just focused on these specific crimes, but he was focused on the systems that allowed them to happen, namely the Toronto Police Department and looking at the fact that they've not only failed the queer community in Toronto, but they've continued to fail other marginalized communities such as uh, the indigenous community, he, at one point he taught, Luke, don't, <sighs> my cats have the devil in them today. Um, but he also talks about the fact that, uh, there was a serial killer preying on indigenous women in Toronto. The fact that the, more often than not, the police are the people who are hurting these marginalized people. And the fact that, it's un. You shouldn't ask the people who are being hurt by these systems to then go to these systems to seek redress and to seek justice, and so I I really loved this book. I thought that it was a it was very well written. It, there was so much grief and empathy and rage at what happened and what was allowed to happen. Um, I also think the title, uh, not just, I, I, I think that it's also, I think that another reason this book worked for me so well is it is written by a, a gay man. And so he is very tied to this community. And one of the first things that he talks about in this book is the importance of chosen family for the queer community. And, um, how someone missing fundamentally harms that community, harms that family. Uh, trigger warning or content warnings in this book, death, um, dismemberment, uh, mentions of cannibalism, police violence, uh, racism, xenophobia. It This was a very good book. And if you're up to reading it, I highly recommend it. Just please check out the content warnings. Um, I'll link the storygraph profile because it'll have a good range. The final book that I read in the month of May was Without You, There Is No Us, Undercover Among the Sons of North Korea's Elite by Suki Kim, narrated by Janet Song. This was an audiobook I had checked out from the library. Luke! Why are you like this? Anyway, uh, Suki Kim is an author and journalist, and this book uh, details her months-long experience working undercover as a teacher 
in North Korea's only foreign-run university, um, the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology, uh, also known as PUST. And so <clears throat> Suki Kim is, or she was born in South Korea and she has family who, uh, her family was split during the partition between North and South Korea in the 1950s. She has relatives who disappeared during the war. Um, and so she had been to North Korea several times before, again, as a journalist. And during one of those trips, she had found out about Pust. And so she had applied to teach English there and she taught two terms. And so this book is talking about her experiences teaching there. It also goes into the history of North and South Korea. And it it's really interesting because on one hand, I think this is a really important book. I think this is a book that kind that I I think that this is something talking about a totalitarian regime that has so much control over its population and just giving a sense of what is going on there. But also, and I know this is something that was discussed when this book came out several years ago, and that there is also an ethical question to this because I don't think this book could have been written without the fact that this that Kim was going undercover, that she was that she was carrying out um, this job of you know writing and recording and documenting, but then potentially putting her co-workers at risk when or her former co-workers at risk when this book was published and I, I don't think there's an easy answer to this I think that sometimes that there are these ethical thing there are ethical complications with journalists journalism and this kind of reporting and it's up to the reporter and those that they work with to weigh those risks um, but I did think it was very well written. I really enjoyed the audiobook version. Um, I thought Janet Song's narration was very good. Um, I haven't read anything else by Kim and I don't know what else they've written. But I think this was a really interesting book. It's one that I would highly recommend. Um, and I gave this about a 3.75, four stars out of five. Anyway, those are the four books that I read during the month of May. Um, aside from A Sweet Mass, I did enjoy everything that I read. I thought that it was a pretty good, like, aside from the fact that Mass Effect completely stole my time, a decent month of reading. And I did enjoy the range that I was reading as well. So have you read any of the books that I read? Do any of them sound interesting or do you have any thoughts about them? Please let me know down below uh, in the comments and if you enjoy what you see, please like and subscribe. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye.